What's up guys, this is ETA Prime back here again. Today I have another new Raspberry Pi case. Now this will fit the Raspberry Pi 2, the Raspberry Pi 3, or the Model B. This is the Pi Boxy. I was sent this by iUker. They're available on Amazon right now for $24.99. As you can see, it's very reminiscent of the American NES. It does come with a remote to shut the Pi down from afar. It also has a working power button and reset. With the script that they include, it's all safe. Safe shutdown, safe reset. You can even shut it down or turn it on from the included IR remote. It's really simple to install their script. I'm gonna show you how to do that, but I wanna take a look at this case first. Right off the bat, flipping up the front cover, you will have access to your four USB ports and ethernet. Now I know a lot of people hate the ethernet up front, but for me, it's not really a big deal. As soon as I'm done setting up my RetroPie image, I'm not connected to the internet anyway. I just wanna play some games. But if you ever do need to connect, you can just flip the lid, plug in your Ethernet, or connect to Wi-Fi. If you're using a Raspberry Pi 3, it does have Wi-Fi built in. On one side, you have your HDMI and 3.5mm audio jack. On the other side, you'll have your power in. Now, I really wish they would have put both of these on the back. I'm not worried about the 3.5, but HDMI and power, I feel like it should have been placed on the back of the unit. Instead, on the back, we just have access to our SD card. Now, I understand why they did it, the way the Pi sits in here. It would have been really hard to set it in like they did. They would have had to use another PCB with Ethernet and power on it. So, like I mentioned, this does have a safe reset, safe shutdown, and a remote shutdown. They also include a small 30 millimeter fan. It's very quiet. I have had some cases that sound like a little jet engine. You can hardly hear this thing. Here's a quick look at the PCB. It is really well made. This PCB looks really good. You do have two fan outputs here, fan A and fan B. So if you want to add a fan to the Pi itself, you can always do that and use the included fan inside of the case. It also has the IR port up front. I'm going to go ahead and put this together. I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi 3. I already have RetroPie flashed to a 32 gigabyte card. But if you need to know how to do it, I have made videos and they also list it in the instruction manual which is really cool. Shows you how to flash it with Etcher. But the main thing we need out of this manual is this curl command. We're gonna have to install this script here to get the power and reset to work. It's a very short command, so you can do it all from the Raspberry Pi by pressing F4 on your keyboard when you're in emulation station. Let's plug the fan in. I'm just gonna plug it into fan A. Make sure your negative and positive line up. Now we just need to drop the Raspberry Pi in here and screw it to it. Four screws, it does come with five, so you get one extra. That's always a plus. I'm always misplacing them or losing them. Comes with this small little screwdriver. It's non-magnetic, so you might want to magnetize it before you start doing this. We'll just put all four screws in. After you have all the screws in and the Pi is secure, we now need to plug in the connector. So in the manual, it shows you exactly how to plug it in and make sure it is also plugged in correctly to the board itself. We're just gonna make sure the red is up top. And now all we gotta do is snap the case together. There are snap locks on here. They fit perfectly and the thing snaps together very tightly. So it's all flush around each edge. And that's it. You got your Raspberry Pi installed. It's time to install the script so we can get the reset and power working and the IR remote. We're going to move over to the Raspberry Pi. I am running RetroPie 4.3. I'll show you how to install this real quick. All right, so here we are with RetroPie. First thing you need to do is connect to the internet. If you're using Ethernet, plug it in. If you're using Wi-Fi, you can go into the Wi-Fi settings and connect to your network. The next thing you're going to need is a keyboard plugged into your Raspberry Pi. So you can do this from an SSH application on Windows, Mac, or Linux, but I'm going to do it all right here because the command is really short and easy to type out. With your keyboard connected, press F4 at the emulation station menu. It'll bring us into the terminal. Now, all we need to do is type this simple line out and press enter. It's on screen now, and it's also in the booklet you received with the case. So press enter. It's gonna download and install everything. Mine's already installed, so you might see some errors here. And the very first time I did install this, it automatically rebooted. But the second time I tried, I had to reboot manually, and I'll show you how to do that. But we need to let this finish up first. Takes about two minutes, I'd say. All right, mine's finished up and it is stuck here. Like I mentioned the first time it did reboot, all you have to do is when you get to this, working in default mode, code equals minus three, 
press Control alt delete on your keyboard. It'll reboot the system and your script is installed. So we're now ready to use the power, reset, or the IR remote. I'm going to move over to my workbench and show you how it works. All right, so I got everything plugged in. I am using a 15 inch G-Chink portable monitor. I'll leave a link in the description. A lot of people ask about this. I'll just press the power button. The LED will flash and it'll boot up. You can also use the IR remote to shut it down or turn it on. I'm just gonna speed up this first boot real quick. For my controller, I'm using a Bluetooth 8 bitto SF30 Pro. These are awesome, but they're about $50 a piece. It does work with Mac, Windows, the Raspberry Pi, Linux, Android, pretty much anything. So the power button obviously worked to turn it on. Now we're just going to hit the reset button. It is a safe reset as long as you install the script correctly. Press reset. You see it doing its thing in the background. And the pile come back on. So that was the reset button, automatically resets everything safely. The power button will automatically shut it down, but we can use this IR remote. Now I think it's pretty cool. A lot of people might think it's cheesy, but I like the idea. We're just going to press the button once and the remote itself is only going to shut the unit down and turn it back on. There is no reset function with the remote. The LED on the case will finish flashing when it's completely shut down. When it's finished, just grab the remote, press the button one more time and the pile come on. I'm not sure of the range on this, but it's got to be just like any remote would be. And that's it. You now have a working reset, a working power, and a working remote to turn your Pi off and on and even reset it. So that's it for this video, guys. That was just a quick look at the Pi Boxy and how to set it up. It's a great little case. The only thing I'm not liking is the power and HDMI on each side. If it was on the back, it'd be well worth it. Now, I know there's going to be a lot of people out there hating on this case, but there's also going to be an equal number of people who actually like this and see it useful for their entertainment cabinet. It is on sale right now. If you have Amazon Prime, you can get it shipped pretty fast. It's $24.99. I will leave links in the description. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe. And like always, thanks for watching.